Hi, this is Jeff, and this is Tropical Plants at 53 degrees north. So today I'm going to do something that's in response to a few questions I've had on costs of running a tropical greenhouse. Um, I have talked about this gadget that I've got, which you input um, your tariff, you know, how much it costs you per kilowatt hour for uh, the electrical appliance. And then what this gadget does is it works out for you what the costs are that it's that it's been running I mean, obviously for something like a heater it's not going to be running for 24 hours so it's really handy works out the costs so what i thought i'd do today is i'd use this gadget and i'd take it around the greenhouse and i would uh, attach it to every electrical appliance that i've got so i've got two different fans different sizes i've got uh, a couple of different lights i've got an led strip light i've got the the mars hydro ts1000 I've got a propagator, I've got a humidifier, um, I have, what else have I got, some, some strip, like strip heaters, uh, they look like strip light, look like fluorescent lights, but obviously they don't light up, they just give off heat. So there's quite a, quite a few things in here, so I thought I'd go around with this thing and uh, work out what it is, what it would cost me to run, to run it, I'd say, you know, over an average week. Now, obviously, it's difficult to give an average, but we'll talk about that at some, at some point in future. And I'll go through the calculations that I'm doing so that um, if you've got lots of uh, electrical appliances in your greenhouse, you'll be able to work out what it's costing you. Um, and we'll also talk about the other costs, uh, which are not perhaps quite so worrying um, because they are something that you, you would do. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm distracted by a giant slug. <laughs> I don't know how it's got in. I'll uh, I'll show you the slug in a minute. Um, yeah, the other costs, like the initial outlay costs, which we'll which we'll discuss as well at some point. So I'll just flip you around and show you this giant slug. I'm sure you're very excited to see it. There is one giant slug. Ta-da! How's it got in? How's it got onto the? There's just no way in. Well, clearly there is, but I don't know what it is. Um, so yeah, what I'm going to do, I'll come back to uh, our slug friend in a moment and, and do the uh, the countdown launch, launch it over into the field. So, strip light here, even I'm calling it a strip light, it's not a strip light, it looks like one. Uh, it's a heater, you can't hold your hand on it, it's very, very hot. Um, so what I'm going to do with that, what I have done with that, if you look over here, I've took my little gadget thing, there it is, um, you can just see the... So that's pulling in what, um, well, it's averaging about 170. So if, if I overcompensate and I say 170 watts for that, that's actually more than I thought. Uh, so that's 170 watts. And I'm going to do that with each of the appliances. So we'll time lapse this and look at the important information at the end. So I'll catch you in a little while. Okay, so that's the heater done. I did that one uh, before coming on camera. Uh, that came out at, as you'd expect, a two kilowatt heater, um, just under. Let's just grab a bit of paper with one hand. Just under. There we go. Do do. It's a two kilowatt heater. It come out at one thousand nine hundred and fifty watts, and then the four foot strip heater. We said uh, under one hundred and seventy watts. So it's this cheap uh, little plastic fan next. So let's get on to that one. And that's cheap plastic fan done, so over to the whew, sunshine, <laughs> the Mars Hydro TS1000, which is on this one here. That's going to be a bit tricky to, to do, but uh, bear with me and I'll get on to that one. And that's the Mars Hydro grow light done, and next up is this big fan over here. It's about 18 inches diameter. Um, I don't suppose it's much more than the plastic fan, but well, there's only one way to find out. And that is plugged in down here. That is controlled by this control. As soon as it goes over 16, then that kicks on. So let's get on with that one and I'll come back to you. Okay, so that's the hydro fogger done. That's that down there. And I'll keep you in suspense till the end to see what all these are. Uh, now for the LED light up there, which is plugged in again over here. I'll be back. Okay, that's the LED light, so on to the next one. Okay, so I'm hoping you can see this. I've tried to make it as big as I can. 
Um, what we've got here is a calculation to work out how much each of the electrical appliances are costing me. I've done it on a spreadsheet. I did do it, I, I wrote it all out actually initially, um, but I wasn't really happy with the way it looked and I wanted to check things as well. Um, I see a spelling mistake already, which is a bit disappointing, but never mind, I'll have to go back and change that. Uh, you'll have to forgive me. I see two spelling mistakes, oh dear me. The calculations are right anyway, hopefully. So, um, what we've got here, down the left hand side, we've got the calculation, which obviously should say calculation. And this is what what I've done to try and work out what these what, what it's costing me. Now I've got this actual calculation off the web, it's freely available, there's lots of uh, you know websites telling you how to do this. So first of all, you need to work out what it's costing you by using one of them little gadgets, you know, find out what's what's being pulled or what's being drawn in watts or kilowatts uh, electricity wise. Uh, so that's the first thing and you need to convert it into watts if it's in kilowatts. Okay, so if for example it says I've got I've got over here that these are some of my results and you'll see that it does actually throw something up uh, which is really interesting for me and it's going to make me change what I do in here so it would definitely worthwhile doing this so I've got my cheap plastic fan and my LED light both drew 38 watts according to my little gadget down here which I've now got on attached to the heater so they're both the same so I'll just put it in one in one column so the fir my first job was to convert this figure into watts by dividing it by a thousand. So power drawn, they both drew 38, or were drawing 38 watts when I had it plugged in. That comes out at 0 0.038 kilowatts. Okay, we've converted it over. And then what you need to do, your second step is to multiply it by the number of hours. Now you can you can multiply it by whatever you want here. Uh, providing you keep it the unit a measurement in hours um, for most of them I did it in a 24 hour period for one of them you can see there I did it for 28 hours but I'll come to that in a minute so for 24 hours if you multiply that by 24 hours that gives you a kilowatt hour figure so for the cheap plastic fan and the LED light it come out at 0 0.912 kilowatt hours being used over 24 hour period okay now if you know what your tariff is from your electricity provider in my case it was actually uh, it was just under 14 pence 13 point something pence don't know why they use point something I don't know but uh, what I've done I always like to overcompensate these things just so I don't get any surprises in my bill so I've, I've put it at 15 pence per kilowatt hour multiplied that comes out at 14p per kilowatt, uh, sorry, per 24 hour period. Okay, so 14p for a 24 hour period. Well, first of all, it's it's negligible amount anyway. Secondly, the fan and the LED light are not on for 24 hours, so it's gonna be even less than that. Fine with that, didn't expect anything different. The hydrofogger and the propagator, both exactly the same, both were drawing 55 watts work through the same calculation. That comes to, uh, each of them separately, came to 20 pence per 24 hour period. Well, first of all, the hydrofogger isn't on for, for 24 hours. So again, that's gonna cost me next to nothing. The propagator is on for 24 hours, but only obviously only when I'm actually propagating something. And secondly, um, it does cycle on and off. It's not actually switched on and drawing that power all the time. It, it, it switches itself off. Um, you know, if, if there's if there's some heat from another source, or um, the heater's just clicked on the, it won't be long. Could go off in a second. Uh, the next one was my large 18-inch fan. That's this, that one there. Again not on very long that was drawing 68 watts so i'm going up here on power consumption 
um, work through to the bottom, that's costing 24 pence in a 24 hour period. So again, not a lot of money. And secondly, it's not on anywhere near 24 hours. It's probably only on about, uh, well certainly this time of year, it's hardly ever on at all. So it's not worth worrying about. So we get to the import of the uh, probably more interesting bits. I'm just gonna move you away here because I don't want you to see all this. I want a bit of a reveal. So I'll just move the camera over there. And then, there we go. So I'm covering, I'm doing a rick. He did this, didn't he, with something, if I remember. Hope he's okay, by the way. Send my best wishes. So, Mars Hydro. So the grow light, and this is this was a reason for doing this video actually, because uh, Patricia asked me, uh, Patricia's orchids, she asked me, you know, how much it was drawing, so she could work out for herself. So this one, work it down, came out to sixty-eight pence. Now this this is where this one is the twenty-eight hours. I've done it for twenty-eight hours because I keep my Mars Hydro on for 28 hours a week it's on for four hours a day seven days a week 28 hours a week so i've multiplied it by 28 there and i've ended up with 68 pence over a, a 28 hour period so for me that's costing me 68 pence a week so the grow light is again negligible unless of course you were having it on for much much longer than that Okay, so I'm all right with that. That was 161 watts, by the way. That's what that was drawing. So we'll move along. Now the fan heater, which you just clicked off, so it's doing its job. Right, this is clearly drawing the most by, by far. This is drawing um, 1,950 watts. Okay, which is 1.95 kilowatts. So over a 24 hour period, again, I've just done it over 24 hours and we'll talk about in a second how long it's actually on for. And that will come out at 46.8 kilowatt hours, which works out to a whopping seven pound and two pence over a 24 hour period. However, so that means if I had it on for 24 hours straight, it would cost me seven pounds. And obviously, I mean, I'm sure lots of you have seen that I've been tracking this anyway um, because of all the insulation that I've put up here. It's not costing me anywhere near that. Uh, you might have seen the video where it nearly did cost me <laughs> that much uh, when I had the, the trauma with where the sensor was. But I've moved the sensor now um, and it seems to be OK now. We seem to have, you know, the, the, the kind of feedback loop that I wanted. So that's not costing me seven pound. We've seen what that's costing me. It's at this time of year anyway, roughly between 80p and maximum I think was about three pound. Uh, but you know, it's not gonna be that every single 24 hour period by any means. So now I'll show you why it was worth me doing this because this is the shock. Get, out, get rid of that, can't I? So, strip heaters, I'm calling them strip heaters, I don't know what they're really called, which are these things. They look like a fluorescent light. They are very, very hot, although that one isn't anymore, because I've switched it off, and I'll tell you why. That, was actually, that is actually drawing 170 watts. Now, when I bought these things, I didn't really look into it that much. And reading in the information, I, I vaguely remember it saying it was like a light bulb. Well, 170 watts is quite significantly more than a light bulb. It's more than the Mars Hydro for a start. Um, but it's how I'm using it, which is the surprise really. So if it's drawing 170 watts, <coughs> that works out at 61 pence over a 24 hour period. However, and here's the, the tricky thing, because the thermostats are so bad on them, and it's impossible to kind of set a temperature that you want it to go off on, it's just so unreliable. <clears throat> I just switched them all on, like it's full. So I've got three of them and they're on full for 24 hours. 
they don't make that much of a difference to the temperature in the greenhouse and it never really occurred to me uh, how much it would be costing so we've got three heaters multiplied by 61 gives you one pound 83 over 24 hours multiply that by 30 days and that gives me a whopping 54 pounds 90 a month which is a <laughs> A big shock to me, unless I've done something wrong in my calculations, which I may well have done. I'm sure somebody will gleefully point it out to me if I have. Um, I'm just looking at it now, trying to figure out, could it be, or could I have done something wrong there? I can't think of anything. It, look, it looks okay to me, apart from obviously the huge number. So if it's costing me nearly £55 over you know, an entire month because they're on all the time. That clearly isn't going to be acceptable to me. So off they go. I'm going to turn the one off I've just showed you. I've got one under there. That's going off. And I've got one under there. Under there. I think that one's only a three foot one. But all three of them are going to, going, are going to be switched off because I can't really see what benefit they are to me at that cost I think I'd be better off just with me normal fan heater there uh, get it nicely finely tuned as to the temperature I want and ironically even though that's drawing the most power that I think is going to be cheapest for me because it heats it up where I want as quickly as possible uh, it's on a good you know it's a good sensor it, uh, it's, on, it's well controlled, it goes off as soon as it reaches the target temperature, unlike the strip light, the strip heaters under here, keep calling them strip lights. Um, so I'm hoping this is going to save me money. Now obviously the, the, the main fan heater there will probably be on a little bit more, but I'll soon know that because I'm, as we've seen, I'm tracking it over here anyway, so I'm going to know what the difference is. So that's what I've learned from this. It was definitely well worth doing, and if anybody, you know, would like a copy of this spreadsheet, I mean, obviously you're gonna you're gonna have to tweak it the way you want to do it, you know, for your own your own situation. And by all means, I'll you know I'll send it off to people. Uh, I might even correct the couple of spelling mistakes. Oh, those calculation is wrong. Uh, what else did I notice? Propagator's wrong. Yeah, they're just typos. I promise you, I can spell them. <laughs> okay, so I'll just swizz you around. Okay, so that's today's video, and I hope you enjoyed that. I did go to rather a lot of trouble doing the doing the spreadsheets, and um, but I think it was well worthwhile. It was certainly something that was a surprise to me, and if I can if I can cut that, I mean, fifty five pound a month. If I can cut that out, that will really make quite a difference. I had, it never even occurred to me that that might be something that was costing so much. I was even going to buy another one of them. I thought they were really cheap to run. Um, I guess they are cheap if the, if the thermostat works properly, uh, but they don't. So, yeah, well worth it. So thanks, Patricia, for, for pointing, pointing out to me that uh, it would be something worthwhile doing. Okay, so I will leave you for today. And you know the drill, like and subscribe, and hopefully I will see you on the next one. Bye.